Tommy Kirk dies, child star of Old Yeller, the shaggy dog was 79 Tommy Kirk, a prominent Disney youthful star in the 1950s and early 1960s who appeared in generational classics including Old Yeller, the shaggy dog, and son of Flubber, died Tuesday at his Las Vegas home. He was 79 years old at the time. Paul Peterson, a friend and fellow child star, revealed his death on Facebook. Figures from show business and the media who will be missed in 2021, photo gallery Tommy was a very private person. In Las Vegas, he lived alone, close to his friend. And Ole Yeller co-star, Bev Washburn. She was the one who woke me up this morning. Tommy was gay, and he was estranged from his blood relatives. We are Tommy's family in a minor consideration. Without remorse. This will be taken care of by us. Kirk said in a 1993 interview with Film Facts magazine writer Kevin Minton that he realized he was gay at age 17 or 18 and that his sexual orientation all but destroyed his career. Disney was a family film studio, and I was supposed to be their young leading man. After they found out I was involved with someone, that was the end of Disney. Kirk said in the interview, I consider my teenage years to be horribly unpleasant. I knew I was gay, but I didn't know how to express myself. It was difficult to meet people, and there was no place to interact at the time. It wasn't until the early 1960s that I started hearing about gay hangouts. My way of life was not accepted, and I felt quite lonely. Oh, I had a few brief, intense encounters as a child, and I had a few affairs as a teenager, but they were all stolen, back alley affairs. They were despondent and depressed. When I was about 17 or 18 years old, he continued, I finally admitted to myself that I wasn't going to change. I didn't know what the consequences would be, but I had the definite feeling that it was going to wreck my Disney career and maybe my whole acting career. It was all going to come to an end. Although he left the Disney youth films behind by the mid-60s, he did 10 films. A couple minor skirmishes with the law over drug possession in the mid-1960s also contributed to his career problems, with a marijuana arrested reportedly leading to his being dropped from 1965's How to Stuff a Wild Bikini starring Annette Funicello and, in the role intended for Kirk, Dwayne Hickman. Kirk was born in Lexington, Kentucky, and moved to Downey, California, with his family when he was two years old. At the age of 13, he accompanied his brother, Joe, to an audition of Eugene O'Neill's Ah, Wilderness. At the Pasadena Playhouse. Joe was passed up for the part by Bobby Driscoll, a teenage actor who would go on to become a Disney celebrity, voicing the title character in Peter Pan before being let go by the studio. After years of drug abuse, he died in 1968 at the age of 31. He was one of the most talented people I ever worked with, Considine said of Kirk in an obituary prepared and posted by the Disney Company today. Terrifyingly gifted. When Tommy Kirk came into audition, a casting director friend of mine informed me that he had never seen a little actor as excellent as him, especially because he could cry on cue. He was a tremendous talent and it was an honor to collaborate with him and call him a friend. Kirk and Considine were both awarded Disney Legends by the studio in 2006, an honor granted to people who have made significant contributions to the Walt Disney Company. Kirk's most lasting contribution to Disney, and to his contemporaries in the nascent youth culture of the 1950s, was undoubtedly as the child star of Old Yeller, which was selected by the Library of Congress for preservation into the United States National Film Registry in 2019. One of the reasons people remember Old Yeller is not merely the fate of a loving dog, but the shattering sadness exhibited by his owner, so beautifully performed by Tommy. Cinema historian Leonard Malton wrote in the studio obituary. I believe his talent and breadth as an actor were underappreciated. He was extremely adaptable. Kirk largely stopped performing in the 1970s, although he continued to meet fans at nostalgia conventions years later. He was interviewed some months ago and for a planned book about the making of Swiss Family Robinson, according to Disney. After leaving acting behind, 
Kirk eventually ran a carpet cleaning business in Los Angeles' San Fernando Valley. Mm-hmm.